Hello and welcome back. What I have behind me here is a 2013 Subaru WRX with about 82,000 miles on it. I'm told that it is in the beginning stages of rod knock. It was just yesterday that it was showing some signs and uh, then it was allowed to cool off overnight and then it was brought to me this morning. Um, however, it was only driven a couple miles and it may not have gotten up to operating temperature, but regardless, it didn't show any signs of rod knock today. So, uh, if it is rod knock, uh, definitely it's indeed in the very beginning stages of it. Um, I'm hoping that I can, uh, before pulling the motor, um, get access to the side with these boxer configurations. The cylinders are on the side, so it's very difficult to get access. Uh, but I'm, I'm hoping that I can get something in there to detect any kind of uh, play or slack in the rod bearings, which would indicate that uh, it would be a, a spun rod bearing. So anyway, with that said, uh, let's get started. All right, let's get started by removing the battery. A little bit of cruise on that. Next order of business, let's get the coolant drained. When the car was up and the coolant drained, I went ahead and uh, took off the uh, lower radiator hose. Uh, now we can start disassembling uh, some of the front tubing here. And I also did disconnect the uh, electric fans when I was underneath the car too, so these just pull out. <clears throat> Alright, now you can unbolt the uh, radiator and it should just lift right out. Next, we can remove the uh, inner cooler. That should lift away. There we are. And I like to tie tape up any of the orifices that anything could potentially fall down into. It'd cause some real problems if something got in here, down into the turbo. I don't need to worry about it. Now let's remove the drive belts. Uh, we'll start with this uh, alternator and uh, power steering pump belt. Um, first we want to loosen the uh, lock bolt here. And then the hinged bolt. And then the adjuster screw. Alright, in uh, 08, uh, Subaru decided to go to a stretch belt type fit, so there's uh, no tensioner on this. Um, this belt is what drives the AC compressor, 
And uh, before pulling it, I just realized that this belt is pretty damaged. Um, as I spin it around, there's multiple points here where there's damage to this thing. <clears throat> Um, I know that they recommend that you don't uh, reuse these belts. They want you to replace them every time and it requires a special tool to properly install them. Here's some more damage here. Um, so I may end up just cutting this off. I'll ask the owner what he wants to do, whether he wants to reuse this one um, or get a new one. If he wants a new one, um, I'll just, I'm just going to go ahead and cut this one. All right, I decided to just go ahead and walk this thing off for now, and now uh, we can always put a new one on later if we need to. And now we can pull off the alternator. Bring it up so it gives a little bit better access to the plugs here. <coughs> Okay, there is one fourth hidden bolt uh, to get the AC compressor off. It's buried way back in behind the compressor. In order to get access to it, you're going to have to pull this off. There's just a one 10 mm bolt there. Just take that off, because then that gives you access um, behind the pump here. The compressor. Alright, now we need to remove the AC compressor uh, from its bracket because this bracket is actually what we're going to use to lift the motor. There's a, a lift point right here, so the bracket will have to go back on minus the AC compressor. There we go. And then uh, right here is the lift point, so this will go back on and we'll lift from here. Now we can put the AC compressor bracket back on. All right, uh, now we can uh, pull the fuel lines. Um, let's see, I'll start here with this return line. Get it out of the way. And um, with these uh, connectors here, um, 
let's see this particular one it's a one half inch uh, fuel disconnect tool and you can use just half of it if you try to use the whole thing it, uh, this, this stuff here interferes with it but it, the little notches here on the screen tab here if you can just twist that around so it's facing the top you can use half of this and it'll push on both sides so I'm stick it in there and <clears throat> I think I had it. There we are, just like so. And then the same thing with one down there. All right, now let's turn our attention to the uh, power steering pump. I believe there's three bolts holding this in. One from the top and two from the front. Uh, this one's a little difficult to see behind it, but you can get there with the swivel socket and the extension. spare you a little bit of boredom I'm not gonna record everything that I do here but at least I'll tell you what I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna start here next by uh, removing the upper uh, downpipe bolts and the upper bell housing bolts and the starter and then uh, I'll put the car up on the lift and then we'll uh, start unbolting things from the bottom side all right I'm looking at the underside of the downpipe now it looks like we got all the bolts from the top um, with the exception of this one here, which was just missing, wasn't there to begin with. And then I also noticed the missing bolt here on that support bracket. And so we'll just go ahead and unbolt here and then the pipe should just come out. Okay, a couple more uh, noteworthy things. Um, I forgot to mention I do need to uh, disconnect the O2 sensor prior to dropping the pipe. Um, another thing is I'm going to have to support uh, this pipe. I'll probably tie it up to the drive shaft here um, before I unbolt that that flange. And then the other thing that I noticed is that it uh, looks like part of this exhaust pipe uh, is rubbing up against the drive shaft there. Um, let's see. Another thing I noticed, uh, of course, not r related to this job, but it looks like there is a leaky axle seal here on the driver's side. All right, so I've got one of these little twisty ties here, and I'm holding uh, the roof section of the uh, exhaust uh, to the uh, drive shaft. Uh, now we can take these bolts out. bolts and now we can go ahead and remove the nuts on the motor mounts Okay, now we got the motor mount bolts off, and I think the only other thing under here that we need to address are the um, grounding strips here. There's one on each side. Here's the driver's side one, and then there's one over here. So I'll go ahead and detach those, and then we can start uh, taking some more things off from the top part of the motor. All right, uh, now we can remove the clear hose.
The coolant hoses are now detached and um, we just need to take the wiring harness here and plug that. And um, also I moved the hood into the service position. Subaru was thinking here. Um, all I did was move the, the hinges here from, here from this location to this location, which uh, pushes the hood up higher so it will create room for the uh, engine hoist. Uh, so we don't have to remove the hood, which is great. So anyway, we're about ready to pull the motor. All right, now I got the engine hoist hooked up to it. Um, you can see the two points that I have it hooked up to. It's on the uh, passenger side, the rear part, part of the motor. There's a little hook. And then of course the AC bracket uh, that we had to reinstall to get this hook here. And um, <clears throat> so now the next step, I'm gonna take the uh, floor jack here Put it under here right and raise the transmission and the motor so the motor clears the uh the studs on the motor mount clear the k-frame and then once that's cleared then we can start lifting the motor and then pulling it out all right now that i got the uh, transmission up and supporting the transmission with the floor jack start raising this up and there we go. I think we should be able to just pry it out now. Okay, one little problem. Looks like the turbo is actually hanging up on part of the bell housing there. So I'll probably have to loosen these uh, turbo bolts here, but it looks like everything's free except for it just hanging up right there on the bell housing. So I'll go ahead and loosen those bolts and hopefully we can pull the turbo up just a little bit to clear that bell housing. There we go, it appears that it worked. Just enough slack there. So hopefully we can pull this bolt up forward now. There we go, it's free. There we go. Oh great, now all the coolant's coming out of the motor. Seems like these things leak forever after you pull them. Well, great, it looks like we at least got the motor out today, so I'm gonna call it quits for the day. And uh, in the meantime, I'll go ahead and transfer the uh, motor over to the engine stand. And then in the next video, we'll, uh, we'll start looking for the problems with the rod knot. So anyway, till then, see you next time.